Okay, now in this video, we'll see how to configure the stops and verify the stops concept, what we discussed theoretically in the previous uh, sessions. We'll verify practically how it is going to reduce the size of the routing table by using uh, stops and totally stops. Now to implement this, I got a diagram here. Uh, you can see I got these three routers. I'm going to configure this in area 10. Uh, you can have more than in these three routers and you can see there I got these two routers in area 20, area 0 and then these routes I'm going to redistribute them into into my OSPF now these routes will be referred as RIP routes and I'm redistribution of those routes into OSPF now these are my even into routes so which means uh, I, I must have to verify this stuff I must have some O routes as well as I need to have some OI routes as well as I need some even into routes right by default your OSPF domain will have O routes OIA routes E1 E2 routes now once we configure them as a stub now once I make these routers as a stub what it is going to do O routes remains the same OIA remains the same but instead of E1 E2 it will replace with a single default route that is what we should expect once we configure the stubs and then after that we'll remove the stub and we'll verify to configure OSP of totally stop so once I configure totally stop I should see them as O routes but instead of OIA even E2 I should see one single default route right that's what I'm expecting this is what a quick summary of what we have discussed in the previous sessions let's verify now so the first step I'm going to do the basic configurations on the routers so I'm going to start with router 1 uh, you can see here on the router 1 I'm advertising 11 dot network 0.255.255.255 in which area I'm going to make them in area 10 and then 1 dot network in which area area 10 and what is the other network I'm using 10 dot network you can see I got 11 dot network 1 dot network and 10 dot network all the three interfaces in area 10 on the router 1 so the first step the basic advertisements and on the router 2 so I'm already on the router 1 I need to connect to router 2 so on the router 2 here this is my command line I'm going to say router OSP of 1 advertising all the interfaces you know I got one down network in which area as per my diagram it's area 10 and I got 20 dot network or even I can say 2 dot network also in area 10 and I got 12 dot network in area 10 as well as I got 20 dot network in area 10 so if you just try to observe here I got all the interfaces 1 dot network here this one and this is my 1 dot network here and 2 dot network 2 dot network here 12 dot network and 12 dot network and 20 dot network so I got all the interfaces and all belongs to the same area that is my area 10 so done so the next thing we'll verify the next configurations we'll go to the router 3 and then we'll configure again the same OSPF on the router 3 router OSPF 1 network 2 dot network in which area in area 10 on the router 3 and advertising the 30 dot network also in area 10 and then 3 dot network in area 0 I got some 3 dot network in area 0 so I just got some interfaces here you can see I got these two interfaces in area in area 10 and I got this interface in area 0 so that's what I did these two interfaces in area 10 and then this interface in area 0 and the next thing the fourth thing I'm going to do on the router 4 let's move to router 4 and on the router 4 I'm going to configure router OSP of 1 again and then I'm going to advertise network 3 dot network which belongs to area 0 and then also advertising in fact on the router 3 I missed this 11, 11 13 dot loopbacks not a problem I can just go and configure now also on the router 3 I missed the 13 dot loopbacks not compulsory just advertise all the loopback interfaces to make your routing table much bigger that's the only reason 
we are trying to arduize each and every interface to make our routing table to look bigger so that we can minimize that by using the concept of stops so similar way on the router 3 it's done let's go to router 4 again on the router 4 we advertised this 40.3 network and we need to advertise the 40 dot network and then we need to advertise that's it and then we need to redistribute rip subnets right we are going to redistribute rip into ospf and then i need to advertise router rip version 2 no auto summary network 14 dot network so what i'm doing here is in the ospf i'm advertising these routes in rip that's what i did in rip here and I am redistributing them into OSPF and that's what I did. Apart from the remaining these two interfaces, I am going to advertise them in OSPF in area 0. That's what I did. So I am done with all my basic advertisement. The first step of your lab, advertising all the interfaces as per the diagram and redistributing them into the OSPF. And if I go and check the routing table of the router 1, if I go show IP route OSPF, I got a big routing table you can see it's not much bigger but I can simply say it's a little bit bigger routing table in my OSPF. Now in this I can see some of the routes coming from the same area these are the O routes coming from the same area and I got some OIA routes coming from a different area and even I got some external routes coming from redistribution. So I got some E2 routes, I got some OI routes, I got some O routes in the router one routing table now i want to make i want to make this area 10 as a stub area so first we'll configure and verify the stub and then later on we will go with totally stub also so once you configure this area as a stub i should not see this e1 e2 now after that instead of e1 e2 what i should see i should see only a single default route and only the border router this border router will have a more specific routes and internal routers will simply have a default rule that's what we have learned theoretically so practically now we are going to verify the same behavior now my requirement is i want to make area 10 as a stub now before you configure the stub there are few points we need to keep in mind the areas which you cannot use as a stop which cannot be used as a stop there are a few important points we need to know it's something you need to know like before you configure the stops we cannot make area 0 as a stop area 0 cannot be a stop because area 0 is a backbone area which is allowing the routes from one one non backbone to another backbone so we cannot make area 0 as a stop so the second thing you cannot make a router area with an asbr cannot be a stop area with asbr means if you take this diagram simple diagram here i got these routes getting redistributed into ospf let, let me take something like this i got a diagram here i got some areas this is my area 0 this is my area 10 area 20 and then i got some external routes coming from here some rip routes and redistributing them into the ospf and I cannot make this area as a stop. This area 0 cannot be a stop. Area 20 also I cannot make as a stop. Because this area 20 is having ASPR. And you are redistributing the external routes into OSPF. Now why you cannot make this area as a stop? Because you have some E1, E2 routes coming through OSPF. When you make this area as a stop, what it is going to do is it is going to stop your external routes nothing but it is going to stop your LSFIs instead it will send the default route but there is no other area will receive the default route so it will simply stop your LSFIs these external routes will not get advertised to the other areas because of the stub behavior so that's the reason you cannot make the area which is with ASBR which is actually doing redistribution that area cannot be a stub uh, you can make area 10 as a stub that works you cannot make area 0 as a stub because it is a transit area and you cannot make area 20 also as a stub because it is not uh, it is actually allowing the external routes but when you say stub it will automatically stop the external routes 
so this is one more thing we need to keep in mind and the third area if you are using virtual links if you remember we we configured some virtual links uh, virtual area we can say the area which is a virtual area like if we just get back to our concept what we have learned in our virtual link concept we can have an area 20 area 10 area 0 area 10 is not connecting to area 0 directly but we can allow this area 10 to virtually connecting to area 0 via using a concept of virtual link and this area will be referred as virtual area and this area cannot be a stop remember if you make this area as a stop because now once we configure virtual link it becomes a transit area which is going to pass your routes it can be external routes also so if you simply configure that area as a stop it will stop your external routes and there is a possibility of uh, routes will not exchange from one one to another because let's say if you have some external routes coming from here it will try to go from here it will stop here and then area zero will not receive the external routes because of that behavior so the a virtual area cannot be a stop now these are the three areas you cannot make as a stop apart from these three areas you can make any other area as a stop okay so area zero cannot be a stop area with asbr cannot be a stop in a normal stop configurations okay and area with a virtual area that's what we call as virtual area cannot be a stop okay so let's go and verify in my scenario if you just try to check whether you are making um, i want to decide i decided to make this area 10 as a stop that's a good thing but you need to ensure that that is not uh, come coming in that three conditions so it's not an area zero so it's an area 10 so it works fine for me and there is no virtual link going through this area 10 so there is no virtual link also and also what is the other condition there is no redistribution of the routes in area 10 right so which means i can make this area 10 as a stop i can do that so to configure the stop what are the commands we need to configure let's say now i decided to make area 10 as a stop where all my area 10 should replace e1 e2 routes with a single default route that's what i'm expecting so to make that possible we need to go to each and every router of area 10 there is only one command there is only one command we need to configure on all the routers of the area 10 in my example how many routers we have r1 r2 r3 so all the three routers of the area 10 we need to just configure one command and that one command will be router osp of one inside the router mode i need to simply give a command called area 10 stop that's it one single command so we need to go to router one and we have to give that we need to go to router two we have to configure that and also we need to configure on the router three also which is my area border router you have to configure on each and every router inside that ospf domain in that area 10 mandatory if you miss any single router by mistake or unknowingly if you just miss any single router even if i miss this routers if there is a mismatch of stop configurations if you make this as a stop and this not as a stop there is a mismatch of stop flag in that case they will not form the neighborship they will not exchange the routes so the mandatory condition one more condition to form the neighborship is they must run a common stop configurations within the same area now these two routers they are on the same area must be stop stop or should not be stop should not be stop on both the sides or if you configure one side as a stop other side you did not configure as a stop in that case they will not form the neighborship okay so it's very important thing you need to know each and every router of the area 10 if you get into production networks probably you may have area 10 may have 30 plus routers we need to go to each and every router and you have to configure this command mandatory area 10 stop that's it so let's verify this configuration So let's go ahead and try to verify the configuration here. 
So I'm going to configure this command router OSP1 area 10 stuff on all the routers of the area 10. That is on the router 1. I'm going to start with router 1. On the router 1, I'm going to say router OSP1. And what's the command? Area. I want to make area 10 as a stub. Just stub. Now, once you do this on the router 1, if you see here, we can see there is a neighbor adjacency has been forced to reset because there is a change and the neighborship will go down automatically because it will not come up again. The reason is if you just check one more time, uh, show IP OSP of neighbor, you can see the neighborship goes to down because there is a mismatch of stub flag. On the router 1, we have a stub. On the router 2, we do not have a stub. So let's go to router 2 and configure the stub again. Router OSP of 1, area 10 stub. Now you should see router 1 and 2 will form the neighborship because there is a stub uh, coming up. But on the router 3, the neighbor will go down because and remember you have to do this configuration on area border router also. So now we need to configure each and every router inside that area including my internal routers including my border router this is my area border router we need to configure each and every router now what happens what is the impact of this configuration is you will see the external routes e1 e2 will be coming from here and the router 3 says i am going to stop the lsa lsa 3 lsa 5 actually so what happens here is you got some routes coming from here all these routes will come as a1 e2 and the area border router says that i'm going to maintain those routes but when i send to internal routers i'm going to just advertise the default route i'm going to just advertise the default route that is what i'm expecting so let's go to router one what you should see now if i give show ip route osp of once again can you see any e1 or e2 routes there is no e1 e2 but instead we have a default route oia I did not configure this it something comes automatically once we configure stops so it's a OIA 0000 and from the router one even if I try to ping to those external routes what are those external routes 14.001 same I'm going to ping if you go to router 2 also now router 2 will see what whether internal routes or external uh, they should should you see external route inter external routes into the OSPF I don't see on the router 2 because router 2 also an internal router it, it's not a border router you will have a single default route but if you go to the border router now the border router will have a more specific routes now the border router will maintain a specific routes because the border router says I am the border I, I agree that I am the border but I also belong to area 0 and I'm going to maintain those routes a more specific routes here but when I'm sending to my internal routers, I'm going to advertise the default route. At the end, if you try to verify the router one still able to communicate with the external routes, there is no problem in the communication. Only it is going to minimize the size of the routing table on the internal routers. That is the one advantage. And also it is going to minimize the number of uh, LSA one advertisements within the same, within the same area. So these are the two major advantages we get when we configure as a stock. So practically, when you implement, there is no difference. It's simple, you know, it just works fine because what we need to do is we just need to ensure that uh, the internal routers must have a default route and the border router will have a more specific routes.